<laughs> but for our next guest, it was about hedonism, excess and debauchery as part of one of the biggest bands on the planet, Duran Duran, telling us all about his new no holes barred memoir. It's the one and only John Taylor. <laughs> I brought the shoulder pads as well. You got the shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't you want to let go of those. Like oh, isn't he tall? You oh, look a lot yeah. taller than you do yeah. in your photographs. How tall are you, John? So nice. Uh, six two on a good day. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. tall. <laughs> yeah. To me, anyway. Mm. I've had a good read through this. Have you? This is a bombshell. I is have it to everything say. you say? It's it? fantastic. <laughs> in the pleasure groove. <laughs> And it's wonderful. And I love the photos, too, because they yeah. are funny, most of them. Yeah, it was, fun. it was fun choosing the photos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And lots and lots and lots about sex in here. Well, I thought I was quite discreet, actually. Oh, did I, you? Yeah, I, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> but discre discretion's not what it used to be, is it? <laughs> it isn't, no. You had a lot of it, though, didn't you? Uh, discretion. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. in the 80s. Back yeah. in the 80s, it was pretty, pretty wild times. Well, you had you. to. I think that's the point. That I, I, the point of the book is you would have done the same if you'd have been there. How with you? you even remember well, it? no, I didn't she say that. <laughs> John, how yes. can you even remember it? It's amazing what you can remember, Janet. Don't you find? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pretty well known up, like uh -oh. I do know John you know Taylor from the 80s. Uh -oh. I know you know him because we've got a photograph of you two together in the 80s. What? Oh! Oh! That's not me. That's Tony. That's Tony, Tony. Nice Tony Jones. Oh, that is me on the left. Yeah. Tony looks on so much left. better than yeah. me. Janet, is that you in That's the Janet. That, that is. is me, and John Taylor's on the left. You look like John in the dress. <laughs> how, <laughs> how cool do you look there, Janet? Yeah, well, really you look pretty wow. cool. You were going out with Renee Simonson, and I was going out with Tony James from C6 Yeah, he had yeah. a good look going on, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, he had a funny look. Yeah. Well, I remember seeing you in the 90s, Janet Street Porter, and your lallies went right up to your armpits. <laughs> and I thought, lallies. my God, I've never seen legs, legs like that. Legs. legs. Mm. But Fantastic. what I found reading the book was that you, you I didn't know you were called Nigel. Uh, I didn't, you I didn't tell that, you that. You didn't tell me your real name was Nigel yeah, when I met go. you in the cafe. It was, it, was, uh, it was that, I think it was either the Monty Python sketch about the great twits of history. Yeah. And they were all called Nigel. Yeah. 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 And that, that, that was yeah. a big hint. And then there was that XTC song. And I thought, no, it's got to go. Yeah. Johnny was going to be easier. I, mean, I didn't know your mum was a devout Catholic who went to church. Catholic. Catholic. <laughs> yes. She had, had to go to a Catholics. meeting every day. We went to Catholic school and then the yeah. band. Yes. In yes. the book, you talk about your mum and dad quite a, a bit. Lot. I, I mean, obviously, I mean, you adored them. Yeah. But there was a pivotal moment, wasn't there, where, that, where you came home to them with all the excess of success and stuff. And well, there was that one mad scene that, yeah. that I wrote about, which was, I think it was the Christmas 83, and I came home, they were so excited, and there were four sacks of mail. In the, in the garage of fan mail. Yeah. And I was, so, I, I was so out of my mind at the moment. I, it was just the last thing that I wanted from them. Yeah. They'd become like the fan club members, you know. Right. They weren't right. my mom and dad anymore. Oh. You know, they, they, they were fully paid up and, and I needed them to be mom and dad. And reality, yeah. So my demonstration of this was to just like tear up all the sacks of mail and, and it, there was just mail going everywhere oh. and the two of them just standing there <laughs> with oh. a shocked look on their face. But um, yeah, I mean, I lost my dad a couple of years ago, and that was really, uh, well, I lost the connection to Birmingham and the Midlands. I stopped going there, and that was really what prompted me to start writing, was, was to memorialise them and the place. Aww. And you're really happy now, aren't you? I mean, you, I love the way you talk about growing older. It's something you're enjoying more, yeah. it seems, than, than the heyday of Duran Duran. Well, yeah, I mean, a big step for me was, was acknowledging middle age. You know, and yeah. I, I felt like through my 40s... What's I was, that like, John? It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> You're going to love it. Thank you. I mean, it's a long way off yet. Thank but, you, darling. But, uh, Skin care, yeah. told you. <laughs> <laughs> Goes a long way, doesn't it? It does. Pot yeah. cream. Yeah. But, John, I want to talk about the sex and drugs and rock and roll. Of course, course you do. Back, so when it was really wild, when I, when I knew you... Yeah. Now, when you went on tour in America, in the book, you say there was this number on your oh, tour. Yeah. Tell me about well, the, the bit of paper that was shoved under your tour, tour door every well, morning. Well, you know, when you're on the road in a band, yeah, you, you, you get a booklet. Well, you don't anymore. You don't get hard copies anymore unless you specifically require them. But, but back then, you would get a booklet, and each, each page would be a day. It would be, today, you are in Chicago. Uh, the venue is, you're on stage at, the hotel is this. 
And in the top left-hand corner, there, there was a number. And it, I found by the end of the tour, it was either 18, 21, 20. And I said to the tour manager, well, what is that number in the corner? He said, well, that's the legal age for con oh, uh, intercourse in that state. Oh. But you know, at this point, all the band members were still virgins. So it was actually... <laughs> It was actually all about, um, it was all about the crew, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, lots, lots more yeah. in the next part. Stay with us. Thank you, John, for the time being. Break time now, but I'm pleased to say, obviously, that John's staying with us. We will see you in three, live and loose. And the best of luck. And John Taylor is still here. <laughs> You, John, about um, recovery, particularly from drugs and alcohol, because you write quite a bit about that in mm. the book. Um, just tell us about that. Well, I, I mean, I didn't think I had a problem. I just thought I was really... I just knew I was really unhappy. And this was, like, my early 30s. And it was just... I was, I was in therapy, but I... Um, but, they, the, you know, that we didn't get into the, the alcohol or the drug abuse. And uh, I actually saw somebody here uh, in London and... Uh, she said, you know, you need to get sober, you know, because if you got sober, you could really be somebody. And, uh, and if you're sober, I can treat you and we can really get at the root of the matter, what's, what's getting in the way. And uh, <clears throat> she said, there are, the best rehabs are in the States. You can afford it. You need to check yourself in. So I was actually really, I mean, at, at first I, I didn't really like the idea. And then I, I had to bump along and, ha and really sort of ha have a bottom and realize you know, I've got so to, I've got to go for it. So you had everything in effect, didn't you? Everything that anyone would write down for a hedonistic lifestyle. Yeah, but that's... Well, yeah, but there's, there's a little bit more to life than a hedonistic lifestyle, yeah. you know. And I, I, I was struggling with my marriage. I was struggling with fatherhood. I was struggling with being 30. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was like an middle, early midlife crisis, in a way. But, you know, when somebody... You know, when I was able to get that diagnosis as an alcoholic, and that was the root of, of what was wrong with me, I was actually quite relieved because I just thought it was, I th I thought it, was, it was either ignorance or I was lazy or stupid or I'd made all these bad choices. And then it turned out, well, actually, I'm one of those people. And then there's, there was a course of, there was a solution for that. What do you think the main reason for it was, John? Do you think had you not been a huge, hugely successful um, pop star in a huge band, had you gone a different way, do you think yeah. you would have still been an alcoholic? Yeah, I think, I, I think so, yeah. I think I could have ended up in as much trouble either earlier or later. You know, I mean, it's just, it was because it was like I was, the, I was the one in the band that didn't have the, the off switch installed when everybody else knew it was time to go to bed, even if it was 5 a.m. Mm. It was like everybody else was like, it's time to go to bed, yeah. but not me. I just didn't have oh, that. Okay. I just... I just kept yes, going, yeah. didn't I, didn't well, I, Janet? Well, you did. <laughs> you did. Cheeky and the difference between you and me is that I never had to go to rehab because I didn't have those problems. But you yeah. have ex expressed it very eloquently because yeah. my partner, you know, was a casualty like that and went to rehab. And what you've said is right, that you have to get to rock bottom yeah. to want to go for yeah. it to stand a chance yeah. of working. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I tried to write about it because it was quite exceptional what I was exposed to. It was a 30-day program it was in uh, in Arizona and I mean state of the art thinking and I got the, I got the benefit of it but you know you've got to you don't just you don't just leave cured you know you've got to you You've must to, go to support groups still. you put as much energy into it as you used to put into drinking <laughs> really? you know, yeah yes. so as, it, it's and a, that it's 30 a days that's fixed you since then well basically. no but that's my point is that it, it's not it's like you there's a there's oh, a program that you have to so, stick to. Obviously, Duran Duran is still hugely successful. You still tour. Yeah. It's the, the same setup, but you're a different person within all of that. How, how are you going to be able to manage that situation? Because it's the same kind of scene. I'm having a, I'm having a better time than I've ever had, actually, yeah. because I, I can just be myself. I think part of the problem was I felt, I mean, I'm, I felt I had to be somebody else in the early 80s. You know, I was getting, the, I was getting this image projected onto me and it wasn't, I was struggling to be, be all of that. Yeah. And, um, and it helped getting out of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've had a fantastic time. I mean, we, we launched All You Need Is Now here. Oh, remember? You know, we did, we did yeah, that live yeah, performance yeah. and it was the first time we played that song live. Yeah. And we've pretty much been on the road promo you know, promoting it up until about two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, it was a massive, like, cycle, touring cycle. Yeah. Can um, I ask you what the rest of the band are relate to? How do they relate to you? Have they changed with you? I or think, yeah, what they, do they, they think about the book and about well, you as a person now? Well, I, th I think they get it, you know. I think, because I think, it's... Um, 
Well, I had enough. I did leave the band for a while because I really wanted to get rock solid um, in this new way of life, let's call it. You know? And also, I was on my second marriage, and I was determined not to lose that one. So I actually left the band thinking I was leaving the band for good. And I think I was out about four or five years, and then I just chanced, chanced into Simon at a department store. Really? And we kind of, we kind of got together. You buy moisturizers in <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us on to the next subject. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Really, just a chance so to make it comfortable was. with a book? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we, look, each of us could write a book. It could be equally great, whoever would write it. It would be a very different book. Yeah. We all see, we all look at our experiences from very different perspectives. Yeah. Because we're so different. You think we're all the same because we're in a frame. It's like you four. I mean, actually, your ex life experiences are so different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and how you, how you articulate your experience. You're going to use different words. It, it, it's, very, it's very different. But, you know, I, I, think it's, I think people want the personality, the individuality. Yeah. Because the group is doing interviews all the time. And you get this party line. Yeah. We have to have this shared approach to mm. situation. Well, this is... This is very much mine. <laughs> You're still the Giant best looking Japan. one. <laughs> I'm the uh, John, it's, it's a fabulous book. In the pleasure groove, and you've got to read it. And mm. the photos Thanks. are wonderful, and the comments on them too. John, thank you so much Thanks for being for live in News Thanks. today. Thanks. Thank you, John thank Taylor. You. And that is all for today. We will see you tomorrow on News Women at 12.30. See you then. Bye-bye.